guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyra Nankerbell. I made this channel just because I want to shed some light onto the Canadian Armed Forces or the CAF. Um, not very many Canadians know much about the Canadian military. Part of that probably being the fact that we watch a lot of American TV, American movies, so we know lots about their military, but not much about our own. In fact, a 2018 report by Ernst Cliff Strategy Group found that only 26 percent of all Canadians actually are aware of operations since 2016 which is a very small number <laughs> so I just feel there needs to be some kind of awareness on the topic and hopefully I can bring some insight to that. A bit about me, I live in Toronto, Ontario and I'm starting my second year of the University of Toronto Civil Engineering program. I'm 18 years old, my birthday is in three days so I'm going to turn 19, ooh, ooh. legal drinking age, shh. And uh, I've always felt the pull to work abroad, but enough about me. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about how to get involved in the Canadian military or the Canadian Armed Forces, and also some things that you should consider while you're applying and going through the process. There'll be more videos later on specific elements of the application process, but for right now, I just want to give you a brief overview of what you'd be getting yourself into. So the first thing is why. Why do you want to join the Canadian Armed Forces? Why do you want to join the military? You need to have a strong why in anything that you're going to do in life, but this is a big decision, obviously, especially if you're going to be joining regular force, so full-time employment where you get deployed. Um, you really need to have a strong why here. The Army has been in my heart and mind since I was 12 years old, so it's been a long time. Um, I've watched countless war documentaries. My dad, he watches a lot of war documentaries. Because he really feels it's important to remember and that their lives should mean something. So that always kind of like brushed off on me. I've also been really interested in conflicts abroad and international politics and really trying to like understand different points of view of that. I just find it very interesting. And I also feel as though because I'm able to serve in the Canadian Armed Forces that I should because there's lots of people who can't and it's still something that needs to be done to protect the country as well as help people abroad. And there's a lot of opportunity for personal development while you go through this process. Um, you know, I really want to see my boundaries and the Army is a great place to get pushed to those boundaries. But for you, you really want to make sure that you have a very strong why. If you're internally motivated and it's something that you really want to do, something that, you know, is in your heart and you have your whole heart behind it, then of course it's gonna go a lot better for you, in my opinion, than if you're just doing it to please someone, if you're doing it to impress your girlfriend, if you're, I don't know, doing it for clout, doing it for the uniform. Just uh, you know, spend some time thinking about your why. When I first went through this process, I actually wrote everything down in my iPhone notes. So it literally says like, army why. And when I went and did my fitness test and everything, I kept reading that over and over because I knew it was gonna be pretty tough, right? So when you have something like that, it's a lot easier to push yourself through rather than just having an external motivator. Okay, so now that you have your why, so why do you want to join the military? Um, the next thing that you want to think about is what do you want to do in the military? Um, do you want to be a cook? Do you want to be an engineer? Do you want to be a pilot, etc.? So go to forces.ca. I'll put the link in the description below. Go to forces.ca and click on browse careers and really look at different options that are available for you. Um, I will say if you're going reserve versus full-time, there might be some limitations just because we don't have a huge reserve air force. Um, so I know that there's more opportunity in reserves for army, especially and some Navy jobs as well. So I might limit your choices, but it says all that on the site. Just go look, watch all the little videos and kind of figure out what fits best for you. When I was going through this process, I looked through a lot of different roles. Like I said, I've been interested in doing this since I was like 12. Obviously, you can't join when you're 12. But I actually remember looking through the whole website and I watched every single occupational video. So I already had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do. Um, I ended up going for combat engineer, which is basically the civil engineering equivalent in the military plus explosives, which is awesome. Just really familiarize yourself with what kind of role you want to end up doing. There's a lot of options. I think there's over like 100 different jobs available in the Canadian Armed Forces. You want to narrow it down to your top three because on your application, it's going to ask for your top three occupations. You're going to be asked to rank them, what's your favorite to least favorite. Make sure that you go through all of them, see what education is required, make sure you meet the requirements. Check out what additional training is available. So under each occupation, you'll see like a video and then you'll see um, kind of like a little written 
description and then you'll also see additional training that's available so for my case a couple of the things that i could potentially do would be being trained as a combat diver a powerboat operator or a radio communicator okay so now you know why you want to join the canadian armed forces you know what you want to do in the canadian armed forces and now how do you actually join so let's get into that basically there are three steps i will say this is a pretty long process um, as is any government job, I'm sure, just because there's lots of paperwork and background clearance. First of all, you need to apply online. So you need to go to forces.ca and click apply now and then fill out all that stuff. Give yourself at least an hour to fill out the online application. They're gonna ask you about your work experience, um, where you've been living the last five years, etc. All types of different typical security question, background check type. Things. After you filled out that online application, your information will get sent to a recruiter. That recruiter will then email you and they'll email you some more paperwork. So now you're going to fill out all this paperwork and then you're going to email it back to them and they are going to send you a appointment time for your CFAT, which is your aptitude test, or your force test, which is the fitness test. In my case, I did my fitness test first, but I know some people who did their aptitude test first. So in the force test, there are four sandbag exercises that you need to complete. Um, you're not given any second chances on any of these, so if you mess up on one part, you just fail and you have to leave. Um, so keep that in mind. Really pay attention. One thing that stood out for me when I was doing this evaluation is the fact that the sergeant was making the point of saying that this is a test of your ability to follow instructions, not just how fit you are. So that's very, very important. It's a test of how well you can follow instruction. Please listen when the guy or girl is speaking, okay? <laughs> because it's really important. Some of the exercises are a little bit tricky. Um, the one that's actually failed the most is the shuttle run. Uh, I found that one the easiest personally, but I know why a lot of people fail. It's because there's like a sequence to it. Just pay attention when they're talking and you'll be fine. So the four exercises, okay. In no particular order, I'm just going to um, kind of talk about them briefly. I will make another video on all of them in great detail, so don't worry. But this is just kind of a look at what you're getting yourself into. Okay, so the sandbags are about 45 pounds, okay? So if you haven't worked out with that kind of weight before, make sure you get yourself to that point where you can lift and carry that kind of weight. The first exercise is a loaded sandbag carry. Another exercise is the sandbag lift. So that was the second exercise. The third exercise is a shuttle run. So and now what's the next one? The fourth exercise is a drag. This is simulating you dragging someone who's been wounded or shot. Okay. Oh, well, I thought the test in general was pretty difficult to be honest with you. Like I felt like I wanted to quit a few times. And I've played a lot of sports in my life and stuff, so I'm not new to like physical activity. But I underestimated how tiring that is. <laughs> so don't underestimate it. It is tiring. I know it's not your typical do 100 sit-ups, do 100 push-ups type of test, but it's still challenging. And I know some people would disagree with me, but our training group went from this to this. It was literally cut in half. So it's important to come into that mentally tough and be able to push yourself through. All right, so that's the fitness test. Now, the aptitude test. The CFAT is a multiple choice test. Each question has four possible answers. So the CFAT test has three parts. It has a verbal assessment, a spatial awareness section, as well as a problem solving section. The first part tests your English skills. There are a couple different types of questions that you can be asked. Um, synonyms, definitions, and relationship type questions are common. So that's part one. Part two is the spatial analysis. This part of the test is doing is it's taking a cube that's put together or some 3D object and then the sides will have different patterns on them. And then it's unfolded and you have to pick which one would fold up in your mind to make the original. So the third part of the test is problem solving. Please, please practice your multiplication, long division, 
and converting percents to decimals and decimals to percents before you try this. A lot of people who wrote the test with me afterwards when we were talking about it, a lot of people ran out of time and had to guess a lot of the questions. So just make sure you're moving yourself at a fairly steady pace. Don't freak out about it. Everyone who I wrote it with passed. Um, I don't necessarily know if they passed for the occupation, but I know they all passed the test. And you only get two chances in your lifetime to write this test. So study, 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 study. Okay. Now, third thing you have to do to join you need to pass a medical and an interview. So in your medical, they're gonna look for things that would prohibit you from doing your job. So for example, if you're colorblind, but you wanna be a combat engineer, you can't do that occupation simply because the explosives are marked in different colors. And if you mix up the wrong colors, you could end up killing yourself, but also a lot of other people. So be honest on your medical, please, because it matters. They're not gonna reject you necessarily for different things, but they might simply just say, you can't do this specific role, but you can do this. So you could still be in the military, you just might not get your first choice. The interview, we're not allowed to talk about the interview. Um, yeah, I can't tell you anything about it, so I'm not going to. Don't worry about the interview. You're fine, you're fine. So that's how you join the CAF, the Canadian Armed Forces. You need to do your aptitude test, the CFAP. You need to pass physical tests, the force test, you need to pass your medical and your interview, and then you will start basic training. So BMQ, basic military qualification, yes, you need to do that. If you're regular force, so full time, you're gonna go do it at Saint Jean, Quebec, okay, for a number of weeks in a row. If you're part time reservist like myself, your home unit, the unit you've been assigned to, will run your training for six months, two weekends a month. Okay, if that makes sense. So it's going to be two weekends a month for six months. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you got some value from this video, please like the video below. Also comment if you have any questions or feel free to DM me on Instagram. And if you're interested in seeing the rest of the journey from civilian to soldier with Kyra Nank, hit that subscribe button because we're going to make a lot of different videos. Awesome. Have a great day.